Before we get into the video, I want to let you in on a little secret. It's a website that's a leading trendy lifestyle online shopping community that sells products at a competitive rate. I know what you're thinking. What sets this apart from other online stores that do the same thing? What sets Poison apart from the rest is that they offer a free authentication service for all categories, not just shoes. They cross authenticate the item, meaning they use AI and a trained professional to authenticate your shoes before it gets to your door so you can rest easy. They offer competitive pricing on trending shoes and the latest drops. They also have over 300,000 hand-picked products across 18 regions worldwide. I'm actually impressed with their authentication service. I tested out their authentication service to see if they could flag down two fakes that I have. And lo and behold, they came out as fake. But I wanted to see if they're gonna do a false positive, meaning if they're gonna flag down an authentic pair as a pair of fakes. So when I did the same thing again to have them authenticate authentic pairs, they passed. All of the results came within five to 10 minutes. And just to throw them a curveball, I wanted them to authenticate a real babe hoodie that failed authentication at one of the most biggest online selling platforms. And the hoodie came out as authentic. Easy. Use poisonapp.com on your phone as it's only mobile only. You will get a $50 bundle coupon on your first order. So be sure to use the link in the description below so you can be sure you're only getting authentic sneakers from the Poison app. All right, now let's get into the video. Check this out guys, I was riding my bike on a beautiful sunny day. After pedaling for about 800 miles, I wanted to take a quick break. I was gonna use this chair to sit on, but then I found a pair of shoes underneath. And right away I could tell they're a size 12 Air Jordan 4 in a classic green colorway. I mean, it's pretty obvious what they are because of the title of the video. There's a lot of dirt and debris in the shoes. Wait, that's not dirt, Th those are crickets. It looked like there was a lot of crickets in this shoe, probably like 10 generations of crickets. You know what they say, finders keepers, I'm about to take these back home and see what I can do with them. Alright, so we're finally back with the shoes and oh my goodness, they look disgusting. You got Jiminy Cricket here taking a quick nap. I just want to know who left these shoes out there and if you're the owner, please let me know so I can give these back to you. It's crazy because these shoes are going for as high as $1,000 right now. I'm going to see if there's still any loose dirt inside of the shoes. I don't know how many crickets there are in the shoes, but they keep coming out. I'm just going to use an air compressor to help me out. Alright, hopefully I got all of them out. I just want to clean these shoes and see how bad they are to begin with. I'm just going to loosen the dirt with water and then hit it with the sneaker cleaner just to really go for a deep clean. I'm going to use A1 Restoration Sneaker Cleaner. It's going to clean off all the dirt easily. I haven't tested it out yet, but in the product description, it says that it can restore the color of suede. The tongue looks a whole lot better, but we got to make sure that the whole shoe is squeaky clean. I'm using a McCulloch steamer. That way I can blow out the dirt very easily. The shoes are looking a whole lot better, but I need to remove the uppers from the midsole so I can prep it properly. Just look how easy it is for me to separate the uppers. The glue is definitely dried and brittle. There's no way you could do that to a new pair of shoes. So there's something I want to try. The stitching has been stained by the mud and the netting is heavily oxidized. So I'm just going to apply 3% hydrogen peroxide on stitching and the netting to see what happens. And I'm going to put it on the tongue tag because why not? Maybe it'll line it up even more. I'm going to put them in my ice box and check back in 24 hours to see where they are. So this is about 30 hours. The shoe on the right hasn't been touched and there's a very slight difference in the yellowing. It's definitely not as dark and dingy. The stitching still has a tint of brown from the mud so I'm going to use a degreaser, a safety greaser to deep clean the stitching. If you guys watched my last video on the Yeezys, that thing worked really good. It was so good that I had to watch my own video twice just in case if I was dreaming. So I'm just going to soak the degreaser all over making sure that the stitching is saturated and then I'm going to let it sit so it can work its magic. 
I'm also gonna use a steamer to help me really deep clean the shoes. So I don't know how well the shoes are gonna take all of the steam, this hot steam and degreaser, but uh, if anything happens, I'll let you know. So while that's getting dried off, I'm gonna start prepping the donors. These were the cheapest donors I could find in relatively good condition. The only thing that I'm worried about is that it's on an all red shoe that's made of suede and the midsole has black paint. Now, why would I be worried about that? For one, it's gonna stain the sidewalls of the midsole. And two, I can't take off all of the black paint because of the excess glue on the midsole. So I'm gonna hit those areas with more coats of white. I've separated about 100 pairs of Jordan 4 donors and this still gets me nervous whenever I put a heat gun really close to the air bubble because you need to hit that rubber hump with a lot of heat for it to separate. So here's a quick tip. If you see chunks of the midsole being eaten away too much by the acetone and it's peeling off the midsole, I would go the opposite way so then I could lift it up a lot easier without the midsole being damaged. All right, so the next step is to remove the factory paint. And all I'm using is cotton balls and acetone. The midsole is still relatively new, so I'm not worried about acetone damaging the midsole. Now that we've taken care of the donors, I'm gonna put the shoes in the washing machine. It's relatively safe to put leather shoes in the washing machine, but you need to rehydrate the leather with a leather conditioner or a spray with mink oil after, after it's done. So the reason why I'm putting these guys in the wash is because the color of the degreaser stained the stitching. Now I'm not gonna lie, the green stitching all around looks pretty sick. I swear if I find another pair, I wouldn't mind changing the whole stitching to green. I'm gonna put the shoes in the t-shirt to help protect it in the washing machine. I don't know if it's going to hold the shoes in perfectly in place, but we're going to find out. I'm going to toss in a few sweaters to help reduce the hard impact of it tumbling around. The last thing I want is for that plastic jump man on the back to have to crack. While that's in the wash, I'm going to take care of the insoles. I'm going to spray it down with a little bit of Dawn dish soap mixed with water. Then I'm going to use my pressure washer to blast out all that caked in mud. All right, so now the next step is to repaint the midsoles. I'm gonna go light on my first few coats of airbrushing the paint. Then I'm gonna go heavier on my third and fourth coat. Now, if you don't want any lint stuck in your midsole repaints, you have to sand it down with high grit sandpaper. I'm using 2000 grit sandpaper to remove any dust that might have gotten stuck on the paint. I do that in between coats just to make sure that my repaints are smooth as eggs. Now I'm gonna jump into prepping the outsoles for a regalu, so all I'm doing is just heating up the glue and using con balls and acetone to lift up that old factory glue. So we got a little bit of a problem. The donors are a little too thick, so it's not properly fitting on the original outsole. So what I need to do is shave the phone down and just finesse it for it to fit properly.
All right, boys, it's finally time to glue the outsole to the midsole. I'm gonna apply a thin layer of barge cement super stick on both the midsole and outsole. I'm gonna let it cure for 30 minutes. After it's been cured, I'm gonna reactivate the glue with a heat gun and then clamp them together. The washing machine helped out a whole lot. The stitching is nice and coke white. Oh my goodness. The washing machine took off all of the chrome paint on the Jumpman. I mean, they're already messed up to begin with. Do you guys know the company that makes the most blackest black paint? So they have another product and it's like the most mirrorist chrome paint. I'm still waiting for it in the mail, so hopefully it'll arrive soon. Do you guys see the amount of spacing there is on the uppers compared to the midsole? That's a pretty big gap overall. I think it's because I put the shoes in the washer without the whole midsole attached. So it just stretched out from the shoe trees. This is going to make the restoration a lot harder than it already is. So what I'm doing here is I'm tracing the midsole on the uppers using a pen. That way I know exactly where to put the glue. Before I put on the glue, I'm going to clean the area that I'm gluing with acetone and con balls. This is going to make sure that my glue has a really strong bond. I'm going to use the same method I use for the midsole and outsole. I'm going to apply a thin layer on both the midsole and upper, but this time I'm going to let it cure for about 10 minutes. And then I'm going to reheat it with a heat gun and then bond them together. There's a big gap between the midsole and upper, so I'm gonna need to glue the uppers section by section. I wanna make sure that the rubber toe cap, the teardrop midsole, and the rubber hump are perfectly lined up. So those are gonna be my main priority.
The shoes are finally glued. Now I can focus on the smaller details. I bought a brand new white insole for the shoes. So I'm just printing out a new Jordan logo for the insoles. The original insoles cleaned up well. I just didn't like how smudged the insole logo was. And that's something I can't salvage. The vinyl that I use is a little bit more of a darker green, but it's a whole lot better than what the original insoles look like. Now the next step is to restitch the rubber toe cap and I'm using a sewing awl for this project. I was thinking about dyeing the air bubbles green. But what if I could change the color without using dye? So I'm gonna use transparent vinyl. So I hopped on my Cricut cutter again and measured the air units, made some adjustments, then I cut it to size. And this is what they look like. There's just too much white going on, so I wanted to add more green hits. And the bubble for the 04 Classic Greens originally had a green air bubble. Now the last step is to bring back the chrome hits on the back tab. I have this really reflective vinyl that I'm going to use. Unfortunately, I never got the mir most mirrorous chrome paint that I bought online. It's been a week and they still haven't shipped it yet, so time for plan B. Instead, I'm going to use an iron on vinyl to put on the new chrome Jumpman. And I looked it up, you can put iron ons on certain plastics. So I'm glad that this worked out. I have these green laces that are supposed to look vintage. Both of the cream and green laces I got from Lit Laces. So if you guys want new laces, I got a link in the description for you guys. Let me know which laces you guys prefer. Do you guys prefer the cream aged ones or the green faded ones? And just in case you guys forgot, this is what they used to look like. If the owner of these shoes doesn't reach back to me, I'm going to give these away. These are a size 12. To enter the giveaway, comment down below hashtag Manalo giveaway. Be sure you're a subscriber and like the video. And be sure to include your Instagram or email handle so I can contact you if you've won. These shoes look like they've been only worn once because it still has all of the stars. I appreciate you guys for watching the video and hope you guys learned something. Again, check out the Poison app if you're looking to buy new shoes or clothes. The link will be down in the description. And good luck in the giveaway.